Hello and welcome to Lost in Criterion. I am, as always, the Adam Glass with my friend and long-term lover. No, that's not true either. I called you my mentor last time. John Patrick O'Neill died or good. <laughs> no, I just I'm had just this team for you before you dug yourself a deeper yeah. hole. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You've saved my life once again. So maybe <laughs> like I'm your what is it, Kevin Costner to your. Uh, Morgan You're my bodyguard? Is that no, oh, I was going to okay. do uh, Robin Hood. You're going to Robin Hood, not to, not to the bodyguard. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Out of all the Kevin Costner movies you could have put yourself into when you started that sentence, you chose Prince of Thieves. Hey, you know, um, I like what I like. All right, all right. Today, we are watching Shock Corridor. I'm talking about, I guess, we've already yeah. watched it. And hopefully, if you're following <laughs> you along, you totally watched it watch too. while we talk. You should, that would yes, be annoying. Yes, watch, be, one, it would be annoying, and two, we'll be talking for about half as long as the movie Well, the is. movie's only an hour um, and a half, right, or something like that? These... It's an hour and 40 minutes. It was surprisingly long. Mm. Um, anyway, 1963, Shock Corridor by Samuel Fuller. Uh, in the last movie we discussed, also by Samuel Fuller, two, two fairly pulpy movies made back-to-back. Um, by a, a king of very American pulpy pulp man. movie. Yes, a very, very pulpy man. This is Shock Corridor, the story of You've been listening to a, uh, a, a newspaper man, a journalist who decides the best way to get a Pulitzer is to be fake it. Um, yes, he, he pretends to be crazy to solve a murder uh, inside an I got a question. Is that Pulitzer material? I don't know much about this. Um, criteria for a Pulitzer, but it sounds more <laughs> should, should, not like should, Pulitzer when, material. Whenever a movie involves a journalist, we should have one of our journalist friends join us. We should. We should, actually. We Just should. like with it's Solo, too late we should for this. had like, our crazy, demented nightmare yeah, friends yeah. join us. And yeah. <laughs> my, the last film, nightmare. we should have had our prostitute friends join us. Yes. All of my prostitutes. Our, well, our prostitute I work at a hotel. Part of I, probably, I probably know some prostitutes. We probably both do. Um, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure some of the people we went to high school. With well, and I'm up. sure I know some here. Um, but the question is: is I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I had a point. It's gone. Um, but yeah. All so right. questionable medical knowledge is the main topic of today's <laughs> today's conversation. Well, first, I do. I do like in this movie. In the last one, we had we had Kelly, our main character, and, and Griff to an extent, who were a lot more well read than they needed to be. Um, for for what was going on, and th- then they really should have been for who they were. Uh, in this movie, in the same, it's a very pulpy movie, but we start out with this quote, this classic. Uh, oh yeah. Whom God wishes to destroy, he first makes mad. Before we go any further, I want to point out Dr. Fong, okay? Dr. Fong of very uh, indetermined uh, ethnic origin. Um, (laughs) Did you see his degree on the wall? No, I did not. From State University. (laughs) Was it? Oh, that's good. Yeah, it was awesome. (laughs) That was one of my favorite scenes. Because, like, they, you know, because, like, you know, I mean, they build props, right? Yeah. And they always do things like that, right? Yeah. But usually they don't. Zoom in on it. Yes, exactly. Usually it's left in the background. I guess I didn't even bother to read it. But no, it is zoomed all the way in as he hangs it up. It's his established. You can read State University. Yeah, it's establishing that like he has a medical degree because you know all doctors fiddle with their diplomas on the wall. I mean, at least he didn't go just to let you know who they. Just to let you know who the boss is, but the thing is, is like State University. What's a state? State State is a good school, Pat. Um, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I was hoping to go to state, but I couldn't afford it. Yeah, I had to had to go to somewhere else. I had, Yeah, I had to go to Tech University okay. instead. There you go. Polytech. Polytech. Anyway. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I just had to get that off my chest before I forgot. It's just because I was like, what? Yeah, before we, before we get too far into this movie, I think it's, it's very... Uh, one of the... M- well, besides the medical issues of this movie, 
Um, Constant Towers' character in this movie is so like the exact opposite of her. I know of her character in the last. In this movie, she plays a a stripper who who doesn't. Well, she she's more of a showgirl than a stripper. Yeah, because she, she never actually takes off. Her, she takes off some of her clothes, but is still wearing more than she would wear to the beach. Yes. Um, in whatever nineteen sixty five. Yes. Uh, and and she's she's again uh, incredibly well learned for for her lot well, in life. Well, we we get an explanation for that. Yeah, she could have been doing these other jobs, yeah, and of exactly. course, all the other jobs that were named are also like super stereotypical female <laughs> yes, jobs. Yes, they're like I could have been a stenographer or something like that. <laughs> I could have sat on a guy's desk and wrote down what he was saying. Um, but oh my god. Like I loved her character in um, the Naked I Kiss. Keep the name the of the Naked movie. Kiss. The Naked the last Kiss. Movie. But man, in shot quarter. Oh man, Good. total one eighty. Just the sickness just, is yeah. bound to rub off on you. She's got all these really guilty. You know, she doesn't like that her boyfriend or fiance or husband. I guess I don't even know. It's not. It's it's very. They're just boyfriend and girlfriend. I yeah, think. Yeah. Right. It's, it's rather ill defined, but she's she's yeah. It's it's ambiguous. Yeah. Super. She's well making, connected she's, relationship. She's making the money as the stripper to support him as he is a journalist at an apparent. But the thing is, what like a newspaper that isn't a newspaper? I don't understand how he doesn't have money. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He apparently works full time for this newspaper. Yeah, and it's a newspaper that believes it is in a standing with this story to actually win a Pulitzer, which means right, they can't right. be that. So it's not the news journal. Yeah, and and on top of that, uh, he's been being conditioned for a year. They can't expect this to last more than you know. They can't expect it to be over in uh, just a couple of weeks or days. Right. So and presumably, guy, yeah, yeah. presumably they are paying him to train how to be crazy and then become crazy in the hopes that he'll win, or, uh, win a Pulitzer. Um, that seems like a real money sink on the newspaper's end for somebody yeah, right. who's. Well, you know, this is back in the day, the heyday of newspapers. Yeah, for, Adam, for some for somebody yeah. whose whose girlfriend has to work as a stripper in order for them to have money. Yeah. I feel like maybe Sam Fuller kind of cooked this one up and didn't really put a lot of time into it. Yeah, it's possible. Because, like, he needed the girlfriend to be doing something where, like, she's pulling the weight around here kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But they should have, I don't know, yeah. Okay. It's really pretty contrived, that part. Yeah, her job Her job as as the the singer, though, also one of the worst worst shot things <laughs> Of, of any fooler I've watched so far. She's really bad really, at... Uh, she's at, the worst burlesque dancer I've ever seen. She's, she's not just bad at the burlesque, she's bad at uh, singing along to herself. Yeah. She misses... She yeah, misses the, the dubbing is the really dubbing. bad. Really bad. The dubbing bad. is really bad, and then the dancing doesn't really line yeah. up with the song. Yeah. And so it looks like what an eight-year-old thing stripping looks like. <laughs> and she starts off with this... It, it kind of reminds. There's this artist called Nick Cave, uh, not not and the Bad Seeds, not the, but, but an American artist named Nick Cave, who has these things called sound suits that you definitely need to look up sometime because they're amazing. Okay. But but her whole little like muppetry at the beginning, where where she's singing through the feathered boa. Oh, that was so weird. Has it feels a lot like one of the sound suits, uh, which is why why I bring that up. But it was so weird, and so, and she's, she's mouthing, she's off when she's mouthing the words. I would call this dance, it's unneeded, and I would call it gratuitous, but after actually, after watching Sallow, I'm not sure I can ever call Nothing anything gratuitous, gratuitous again. Um, <laughs> no, but it is unnecessary. Like, we have all the information we need to know to know what she does. Yeah. We didn't need to show it, especially since she's so bad at it. Yeah, and on top of every, every single male character in this movie that interacts with her, Emotionally manipulates her into going along with this, and she's right. Yeah, she she goes for it. I mean, she doesn't she doesn't go for it willingly, but she she falls for this manipulation. Um, she is not. I, if anything, I think that uh, the naked kiss might exist just because Sam Fuller felt bad for how he portrayed her, her woman. Yeah, in shop maybe. corridor. <laughs> It's quite possible because oh man, she's a just not a good character, no. and the, and every time I I want to move on, but I keep flashing back to that dance scene. Man, <laughs> she throws the the beaded 
this thing under like she chucks it under her legs yes. like a football. Yes. Is there anything less sexy on the face of the planet than her dance? Yeah. Like, it is not... Like, I understand what it is. It is... She saw a burlesque dance, like, 10 years prior, when she was, like, maybe, like, 20, right? Yeah. And this is, like... She's never tried. She's never practiced. And, like, Sam Fuller was like, do a do a sexy dance. Well, we'll just add that to and the list. this is, like... To add that to the list of things Sam Fuller didn't bother to didn't bother research. to uh, research. Like yeah, it's like it was really weird because it was like I literally it's one of those weird things. I think it's like one of those things where like if you tell someone to smile, they're going to have trouble doing it. Yeah, because obviously we see in like the Naked Kiss, this woman does not have a problem being sexy. No, she doesn't. This is not a problem, but it feels like because somebody said, do a sexy dance, suddenly she turned into, like, a 12-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. It was really a weird dance. And, like, I was like, well, we didn't need this. Yeah. And now I'm kind of sad. <laughs> There's uh, it kind of makes me sad, that scene. I, I hope that uh, Johnny isn't supposed to be indicative of all journalists, too, because he's got some real moral problems. Mm. Uh, not, I mean, uh, on top Maybe of this is Sam Fuller's portrait of a journalist. On top of you know uh, emotionally manipulating his girlfriend and going along with this plan, wherein he pretends oh, yeah, this to be is crazy. On like this is emotional abuse yeah. almost. Yeah, and then he pretend wherein he's pretending to be insane uh, to get a story uh, by checking himself. You know that happens, and that's fine. Investigative reporting. But in order, here's the thing: it wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary, and in order to in sell way. himself, in order to sell himself as insane, he physically attacks the shrink, and that's that, that crosses yeah, some right? ethical lines that I think he yeah, he was already I towing. I understand it's a pulp film, and like we're not supposed to like dig too deep into like the story. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I really right from the beginning, I was like, I don't understand why he needs to do this like the police couldn't find out who it was so i need to go undercover it's like no you don't clearly these insane people will just talk to whoever hang, happens to be hanging around with them when just, they have a moment just start going visiting uh-huh. yeah just like get permission from the doctor who obviously apparently didn't commit the murder yeah he's so pretty just, cool like hang around he'd probably be okay with it because apparently they let random people come in for like therapy anyway See, it's journal therapy. I don't I don't see how this case went unsolved at all. Yeah, actually. Not hard. At there all. is there is no reason. I mean, even even though our three witnesses are in some sort of psychosis the vast majority of the time and, and they have moments of clarity. They apparently. do have moments of clarity. And even it, even if we work on the assumption that the only reason they have moments of clarity is because Johnny has spent time with him, even though as far as we're concerned, he meets these guys, has a short conversation, they get their moment of clarity, and then boom, he's got his information, or as much as he needs or can right. get from each individual person. Um, even if we accept that is true, so that police in an interrogatory sense couldn't get it, you'd think the psychologist would want to know, you know, if... Who committed murder Who committed a murder hospital? in his hospital, and he would well, probably... Right. And, and, like, we don't get... He's not, like... Like, I was kind of expecting him for to be, like, you know, like, when you see, like, psychiatrists from, like, an insane asylum portrayed in popular media, they're kind of, like, this washed up, like, I don't give a crap, I don't, you know, like, yeah. almost, like, villainous character, right? Yeah. Well, he doesn't come off as that at all. He's a quite pleasant fellow who seems he's, to care very a, much a, about his patients. He's, he's a reasonable person. He's one of the better actors in the film. And, and he does I'm a very like, good job. In, in a lesser... In, in different hands, uh, this movie might have ended with the psychologist, one being the murder, and yeah. two, so two... would have been an episode of Monk. Yeah. This, this, movie, this movie could have been a lot more Monkish or even Twilight Zone-ish. Well, not Twilight Zone, but certainly uh, yeah, the other one. Um, uh, outer Limits. Uh, in, yeah. that, in that, you know, it could have ended with him, one, him being the murderer, and two, him... You know, trying to keep, trying to cover it up by by having and painting Johnny Barrett as actually insane, whereas yeah. it, instead Johnny Barrett is actually insane. 
but wins his Pulitzer in his one in his moment of clarity right before the end. Hooray! Um, Although I still think you're supposed to have to write. <laughs> well, no, he did write. That's the mm-hmm. implication. The implication in the final scene, and kind of explicitly stated, is that he made it out of the hospital, wrote his story, won his Pulitzer, and then slipped into this. Uh, Paralytic psychosis. <laughs> okay, yeah, and we'll get back to like psychosis as contagious disease. Yes, yes, and the whole entire wealth of problems that we have here in this film. Yeah, um, yeah, but, but the doctor, yeah, okay. the doctor is super. The doctor is super reasonable. And so, like, yeah, even and at so the end, I don't understand. I don't understand why he isn't actively seeking to get his patients to open up about what happened. Yeah, because witnessing a murder. Would have been very traumatic for his patients anyway, yeah, th- so he should be seeking to yeah. help them with that stress anyway. You'd think. You'd think. So he should already know who committed the murder. Yeah. Frankly. And it should not it, require an investigative journalist going undercover to find out. But instead we get uh, we get this... Uh, and the, even, even the doctor's response to how it's revealed. We get this extended fight sequence between... <laughs> yeah, the doctor's like, okay. Between Wilkes and, and John, and, and one of your patients, who you have yourself certified as insane. Not insane. Tackles one of your orderlies, yeah. wrestles him to the ground, beats his head against the floor, proclaiming, yelling, who killed Sloan, who killed Sloan, until, right. until the attendant finally says, I killed Sloan, and we completely <laughs> right. accept that as reality. Yeah, never, never considering as a psychiatrist, like, Things done under duress, yes. not necessarily being then, entirely accurate. And then immediately, the guy, ex- the the man, your patient, stands up and says, "Hey, I'm not actually crazy. I work for the newspaper. I came undercover." And he completely accepts that as it's work. Right. It's work I, too. That's one of the weirdest scenes because it's like the doctor's like, mm, "Okay," like, like he doesn't even really respond. <laughs> like, I think the doctor taking hitting the hitting the old medicine cabinet a little hard. <laughs> Maybe. Sounds like pretty heavy tranquilizers himself. Because he just, like, totally doesn't care. He's like, uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, even his face, because they've zoomed on his face, is like deadpan. <laughs> yes. It's like, mm. oh. Murderer, huh? Uh, gonna have to fire him. Gonna have to fire him. Do you know how hard it is to get another orderly around here? Like, and it's, it's weird, too, because the implication... No, it's explicitly stated that Wilkes killed Sloane because Will because Sloan knew that he was messing around with the female patient. But mm. Wilkes has already transferred out of the female wing. Yeah, he it said is himself that he is, be, yeah, probably been doing something wrong. And again, while that might or might not be a firing offense, clearly he was transferred out for a reason. Yeah. And they didn't fire him. So unless weird it, the problem. Unless it's some sort of self-censure in order to guarantee... It be, because he believes that if he finally gets caught doing this... And doing what he's been doing with the female patients, um, that the murder will come out. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe he's decided to, to get himself out of the situation. Himself, but, but there's got to be, you know... But that just, seems like a lot of like self-awareness for a man who also murdered somebody. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That is, that is way too much. Apparently, somebody murdered somebody in, like, pretty much cold blood, and then covered it up. Yeah. To like be like, oh man, I better get out of this nympho wing. Which, by the way, nympho wing. Yes, the the entire was wing this, like, devoted the only to nympho. Female, de- like, was this the only female diagnosis that? Uh, <laughs> That Sam Fuller was aware of? <laughs> Not only the Nympho Wing, but the Nympho Wing is one door away from the hallway that stores all of the male patients. Yeah, right. And, a, then, like, and apparently unlocked from the male side. <laughs> right, right. It's like, wow, I think like maybe there's something nefarious about the doctor that we're not yeah. taking into account here. <laughs> maybe maybe this, this is a pretty weird place. Yeah, uh, yeah like they, they, well, and come on, the Nympho scene... Is the weirdest thing? Because we have another dance and song number. What is it? And, what is it implied that they're doing? Are they like biting his face? I is don't that... know. I think they're fighting over him amongst themselves. But they're all. But they they're all just but the like actresses didn't know. Him. Yeah, it's I like think they it's had the no idea how like, to do it. They didn't know what to do, and and Sam was like, oh, 
just attack him. <laughs> Say, well, we don't want to hurt him. Yeah, and it came off really weird because, like, they, they, they rub no, their I can't they rub their hands on him. They rub their hands on him and they kiss his face, and then in the and next then it scene, turns into like rabid wolves. Maybe he like, got like a rash from the kisses. No, no, like they're biting him at the end. Are they really? It doesn't see, make I any sense. I didn't actually see them biting no, him. Yeah, I just saw the, the bandages thing. in the last they scene. They totally look like they're biting him, but it doesn't make any sense. They yeah. are, I guess. They're weird nimbos. They probably yeah, do stuff they, with uh, poop. With what? With, with poop. poop. <laughs> I hate you, Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, eventually, I'll yeah, forget about Salo, and we'll stop yeah, referencing it. Yeah, we won't ever forget about it. Um, <laughs> no. But no, it, it's really weird, because it's also, like, this is the one part of the film that, like, starts to cross over into, like, the 70s sexploitation sort of thing. It's like, yeah. like yeah. we didn't need that scene. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. And, like, and, and, and it didn't make any sense. It didn't tell us anything. It's. I think it's meant to to kind of be one of the pushing Johnny toward the edge things. But it's mm. it's even weirder in that you know he's already in the very first night at the hospital. Crazy. He has this. He's already crazy. He's got this like think. psychotic vision of his girlfriend tickling his ear in miniature, uh, yeah, telling yeah. him that he's he's crazy. It's weird because yeah, like again, we get into the whole like psychosis as contagious disease thing, and it's really weird because like apparently just being in the in, in the loony bin makes Johnny crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, and we really get into this thing, and that's part of the thing that I found. I do not know much about psychiatry, okay? At all. Okay. I am totally unaware of most of it. But even I'm sitting there going, "This just." can't be right sam did you just look in a in a in a psycho or in a psychiatric medicine book and just like pull out random words because the, the doctors aren't even making full sentences <laughs> yeah it reads like a telegraph it's like schizophrenia stop disorder stop <laughs> inappropriate action stop actually no that, that sigmund that, freud stop that reminds me because everybody in this movie also has a really weird accent on their nouns because they don't say schizophrenia. They say eh, schizophrenia. Yeah, yeah. My favorite one, though, is, um, oh, oh, I got to think of puberty. Puberty. <laughs> Did puberty. you hear that? Yeah, I, yeah. I wrote that one down. Yeah, puberty, yeah, that one schizophrenia, yeah. and, and core ER. Puberty. Oh, I so said yeah, that, that one. They put, they put the emphasis on every syllable in Korea. Well, I can get Korea. away with that, maybe, because cause that's the same as, like, people I know pronounce in Japan is, like, Japan. I can't even do it. <laughs> exactly. It's hard, you know to, I mean? it's yeah. hard to purposely do it. I had to write it out phonetically just to remember. Korea. Puberty. Puberty. Yeah, p- puberty. Puberty, puberty was definitely, the, definitely the worst. Puberty. I was like, has this doctor never heard of this word? <laughs> like, you know, I was like, how does the actor not know how to read that word? Is there a time when that... Was actually, no. were no. people actually pronouncing that word like no, that? No, because it's the pubic region. Yes, exactly. No, yeah. Like, there's no way you're like transposing it like that and be like, it's the pubic region, but everybody goes through puberty. Like, I'm not, and now I'm imagining like those videos from health class. Like, everyone goes through puberty. Like, it's really, <laughs> it was really a weird scene. I was like, it totally took me out of the moment. I was like, what? Say what? Because the rest is just so, totally like he could have written like Sam Fuller could have written medical jargon instead of like the actual words. He could have just written, medical jargon, medical jargon, psychiatric bullshit, medical jargon, medical jargon. So he's insane. You know what I mean? Like because it just yeah. sounds like nonsense. And I think that's what he did. I really think he just. I don't. Again, I don't think he had what's typically referred to as like a medical consultant. I think he literally just started looking up, like, synonyms for crazy. Yeah. In his thesaurus or something. Maybe. Maybe. Because, like, again, like, the way they talk, this is some of the most weirdest scenes, is the doctors are not making full sentences. There's no verbs in their sentences. And half the times there's no subject. It's just, like, <laughs> schizophrenia, psychosis. 
As if saying the word disease. has this magical property to imbue the target with them. Yeah, like, right. Like and saying then, saying psychosis is, yeah, is this and talisman. Just, yeah, right. <laughs> and then mixing in these other words like psychosis disorder, and it's like, what? I don't case of dementia or something. It's Listen, like this. This was a dark time for psychiatry, and he's lucky he didn't get lobotomized. But you know, the movie might have been more interesting if he did. Um, <laughs> Maybe. But you know, it's really weird because. Oh, and then. Don't get me started on the actual, like, crazy people he hangs out with. I actually yeah. really enjoyed them. Um, oh, no, they were. They, they were. were I mean, they weren't, they weren't very, they weren't necessarily very good portrayals of, I mean, they were very uh, of, stock yeah, portrayals of crazy of people. But, um, yeah, it, I kind of, it gives me a feeling, though, like, I feel like this is, like, very much, because this film of when it occurred, feels like it might very much be a, for a template that is followed for what, insane asylum should look like and behave Maybe. like Maybe. in all other popular media from that point on. Yeah. One thing, one thing I really absolutely loved about this movie though, is, uh, the, the color splices. Um, that was weird. It was weird. And it was because it was weird. It worked really well. Mm. Um, I think each of, each of our, each of our uh, three witnesses, and then Johnny himself at the end, um, as uh, as they have their moments of clarity, um, it shifts the color. They we get this sort of dream sequence within their imagination um, that's in color, and they comment on it always being in color, as if as if the world they live in is actually in black and white, but everyone knows what color is. Yeah, right. So it's <laughs> the giver. Yes, <laughs> they, they exist in the giver. Um, yeah, so uh, so we we cut to them, and it's it's weird. Apparently, I I have read that Fuller shot that shot all of those scenes himself, um, but they all seem like really bad stock footage. Yeah, they do, and that's weird because <laughs> yeah. his his black and white footage is, I for the most part, very well done. Yeah, and it's like he's like color. Yeah, this is all Don't like six. Actually, it's, see that, so I'm going to need some. It's all like sixteen millimeter handheld. Oh yeah, it looks like he just like, like he bought the camera off the store shelf. Yeah, and Dave, give me some pictures of Japan. Tim, yeah. uh, I forget some of the other ones, but you know what I mean. Well, there's the well that oh the, the one Ma- in Japan, the Ma- Maori dance or whatever it is. I don't the Japan one actually, well, it's South American, I think, not Maori, I, I wasn't but paying but anyway, attention. um, the. Uh, the first one, the Japanese one, makes sense because he's, you know, he's he's a Korean soldier who ended up in Japan, and and well, and then, yeah, and that's where they took leave and all that jazz, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but the second one, <laughs> yeah, the why second, is he in South America? The African American student flash it apparently like flashing back to this native. Uh, he does he does say one great. <laughs> there's a great line from all of that uh, because he's he's uh, the background on this character is that he's. Uh, he he went to he was one of the first at an integrated Southern college, um, so he broke under the pressure and has become a white supremacist himself, which is um, pretty awesome as yeah, far as like um, uh, he's introduced he's introduced effect. holding a sign in front of his says that <laughs> yeah. integration and democracy don't mix go home nigger, and and then it drops and we see that he's African American. Uh, well, Negro student, according to everybody else who describes him, because there's values dissidence in how we refer to race. Um, he's yeah, Trent is his name, and he steals pillowcases to to, to, make to have KKK rallies. <laughs> and he he thinks he thinks for a moment that he is the founder of the KKK, but he dreams of this. His his color sequence is like this Amazonian tribe. Yeah, and, it's and, really and, like. In the, a little bit. Yeah, in the fever of things he's yelling, one thing he says is Supreme Court declares that ceremonial dance must be integrated. Yeah, I like that line too. <laughs> it's yeah. a really funny line. Yeah. yeah. It's like I really feel like maybe Sam Floyd did use stock footage footage, you know, and it's like, man, I can't find anything good for this guy. And then he just stumbled yeah. upon that. You know what I mean? It's really yeah. weird. And then, it's it's weird. Also, the the evidence he gets, like the first guy he talks to, he finds out that the murderer was wearing white pants, so he's got to be a doctor or an attendant. 
Yeah. And then the next thing Ollie finds out from Trent is that the murder actually wasn't attended, but Trent can't tell him who. And then the next guy finally tells him who. It's just, it's this really slow flow. But it's like of, not really, of none facts. of the previous evidence does anything to help with the determining of the next piece of evidence. He could have just talked yeah. to whatever doctor. Uh, yeah, if he just talked to the third I'm gonna guy, call him Dr. the scientist. Rosen because I have no idea what his actual name is. And I'm going to say it's the inventor <laughs> of the Higgs boson. I was uh, actually just, <laughs> I was just name? referring to, I think I referred to him as Oppenheimer in my, in my, <laughs> yeah, but right. I really have no idea what his no name idea. actually what is. Name is. <laughs> but they, he yeah. could have just talked to him right from the beginning and it would have been over. Yeah, exactly. He's clearly the one capable of most clarity. Yeah. And so it's like really weird because it's like, I don't understand like how, you know what I mean? Like, it's really like, I feel like. We're supposed to be treating this like a detective story where, like, he's building a chain of evidence that leads him to his... Yeah, but there's no actual chain of evidence. Yeah, there's nothing. It's just, I talked to these three guys, and the last one I talked to gave me all the information I needed. But then by that time, I was too crazy to do anything with it. So, oops. Yeah, it's like, and again, we just keep coming back to the fact that he didn't need to go undercover. Yeah, yeah. Like, the story why do the exists. Crazy people need to believe he's crazy in order to get the give him this information. Exactly. They exactly. yeah, apparently will talk to anybody. Yeah. That's and really and cool. all it takes is interacting with them. I mean, Trent Trent is the only one he actually like befriends. Before. Yeah, he's the only one he really has to kind of work a little bit to get yeah. the information. And, and then and Trent's Trent information is useless. Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 well, I mean, to an extent, Trent could have, he knew who it was. He says it's an attendant, and he's about to say who it is when he slips back. But th- that's the other problem with this movie, is everybody knows all of the information Johnny wants. Right, nobody owns, they don't but know appar- pieces, they all know 100%. Yeah, but apparently everyone only gets one moment of clarity a year. <laughs> right, and the police weren't around when it happened. <laughs> yeah. So, so Johnny, Johnny happens to be there during each one, but once they slip back, he can't possibly bring them back again to give him the information it's, it's he wants. It's weird. It's really weird because, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. The psychology know, again, of this movie. I, I know we're supposed to ignore it because it's just yeah. It's there's there's problems. There's suspension suspension of disbelief problems with this movie. But it's certainly. too much. Yeah, it's just too yeah. much. This you can't suspend all of this. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like. It's too nonsensical. Yeah. Like, and then, like, we have a reason for why Wilkes murdered him, but it's not a good reason. And yeah. Wilkes doesn't even come off as being violent, really, or crazy. Yeah. Throughout the film, he actually comes off as a very likable guy. It's really hard to believe that he's a murderer. Yeah, I mean, obviously, in the, in the same way that Grant in The Naked Kiss is supposed to be a likable guy... And 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 then we find, him. but it's it's actually believable that he would be. Even I guess it helps that we catch him in the middle of things. But but Wilkes being a murderer, he plays a really good show, and obviously yeah. that's supposed to be that's supposed to be throwing us the viewer off the trail. Um, it doesn't come off that way. Yeah, like I no. think if I rewatched it, knowing that Wilkes is the murderer, it wouldn't change anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, with, with The Naked Kiss, we definitely get, like, as we talked about, like, knowing that he's a pedophile will totally change the way you read the movie. Yeah. Knowing that Wilkes is the murderer doesn't change any of the actions, I don't think. No. It just, he's it, still knowing, just a nice Knowing why. Guy. Knowing, and the weird part is there's this undertone. Like, the only thing it possibly might change is that at the beginning when he says, oh, I work with the guys now because I had some issues with the lady wing. Um, yeah, well, he even there's already the implication. Too dangerous for me. Yeah, it was getting too dangerous for me is what he says. But there's already the implication that getting too dangerous for me means, oh, I was having sex with the, with the patients. Yeah. Or they right. were trying to have sex with me. In either case, you know, knowing that well, he did have sex with the patients, and then he murdered someone to cover it up. Doesn't really, you know, Make it doesn't affect our reading of that or anything. Yeah, yeah. We already know that he's just sort of downplaying what he already does, did and does. Yeah. Well, but then we have this statement like I think like um, Johnny makes this statement like, 
with a, the, something about why we have to catch the murderer because he could strike again or something. It's like he's not a serial mur- like murderer. Yeah. Like we even know that he's not. Like from the very beginning, because like there's been one murder, and it was and pretty obviously yeah. sounding like it was in like the heat of the moment. And it 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 and it happened at least one year prior to the action of the film. Right. And so we're left with this like. I don't think this guy, yeah, he needs to go to jail, but he's not going to strike again. It's not like he's serial murdering, murdering, yeah. and murder, that, I can't say that. Murdering. That makes the motivations of, of Wilkes even more weird within the movie. And not weird in a suspect sort of way, but weird in an unnatural way. Why is he still working there? He's transferred to a different wing, but, but yeah, the murder just the murder happened job. in the wing that he transferred to. Yeah. He doesn't seem to actively be trying to silence anyone. Otherwise, he would be around whenever anyone started having a conversation with right. the three he guys. Start who knows showing what's happening. up, yeah, and like he would be trying to disrupt. And it's yeah, it's weird. It's like he doesn't know he committed the murder. <laughs> it almost is. It's like, I um, guess, like dinner theater or something weird like that. Like, oh, I'm the murderer. Surprise. Yeah. Yeah. It's really... it. The, he even the doesn't mystery. seem like he knows why he's being attacked by Johnny. Okay, yeah. we need to read this movie completely different. Johnny, crazy from the very beginning. Okay. 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 Johnny, Johnny snuck into the asylum. Committed the murder himself. Well, we gotta figure. No, we gotta figure that first of all, he's totally delusional. The thing, the people he talked to in that whole event sequence leading up to this, not like this at all. Okay, yeah. Kelly. Okay. Maybe doesn't exist, or Kathy is her name. Oh, here, Kathy. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. You know it's what I mean? So close. Like maybe, it doesn't. I mean, exactly. He maybe he's really crazy. These are all delusions. He gets put in the mental hospital because he actually needs to go to the mental hospital, and. No, there was no murder. Or maybe, yeah, okay, maybe so just, Johnny B. did commit... Or not Johnny... What's his name? Johnny... Nah, doesn't matter. Johnny... Maybe he committed the murder. We don't know. But, uh, no, maybe there is no murder. I'm just saying. Because, like, the motivations of the characters and their behavior are so weird that it's kind of hard to deal with as, like, face value. Yeah. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's weird. It's weird. It, Maybe it's a, it's a bit hard to deal with, considering how much I enjoyed the Naked Kiss. Yeah, that the one right before it is not nearly as good. And no, yeah, knowing knowing that the same cinematographer uh, worked on this, and you know, even even there, the lighting and the you know the black and white scenes are very stark and very shot very well, um, especially in in Johnny Psychosis scene. Where it starts to rain inside, yeah, I and like suddenly, that scene. suddenly the hallway is empty and infinitely long. Yeah, um, I like that scene. Yeah, it's really greatly done. Even though the matte painting of of the hallways yeah. end yeah. is always very clearly a matte painting whenever we see it. Um, Take what you can get. But it, and maybe maybe I'm remembering it better. It is better than it was. But I feel like uh, they moved the infinite hallway matte back a little bit to give the actual physical dimensions of the hallway a little more space it did, before we get no, to the end. Yeah, I do feel like, yeah, it was it was definitely, like, it was well shot. I mean, the, the infinite hallway yeah. looks infinite. Yeah. So we've got, we've got the same cinematographer as The Naked Kiss, obviously the same writer-director because it's Sam Fuller, um, and yet it is The Naked Kiss is such a vastly superior movie to this, I think. I guess lessons learned. In a lot of ways. Because yeah, The Naked lessons. Kiss was made second. I guess maybe... Yeah. But, like, I guess Shock Quarter must have been at least reasonably popular. But I guess if you're... If you exist in a time when these movies were actually being released, and this is sort of the kind of thing you might go see in a drive through or something like that, yeah, you're probably not reading this deep into the film. No, no, probably not. Because, like, if you really shut down and just watch the film, it's it's okay. And and maybe if you're not as sophisticated as far as, like... I feel like there's also a a pretty serious disconnect on the awareness of medicine and Uh that sort of stuff among even the most mildly learned modern American. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that my parents when they were 20 would have noticed the 
basic nut jobness of the words that are just being spouted off for no reason. Yeah. They would have just heard, like, maybe psychobabble, psychobabble, psychobabble. You know what I mean? And I say that just because I've experienced that a little bit with my students here. Like, and my, even, like, adults here sometimes will not be as aware of all these sort of medical terms as I find generally to be present in modern American society. Because we're bombarded with those terms in, like, the news and stuff so often. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just weird because, like, maybe we're just reading it way harder than we ought to be. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I mean, it is pulp. We shouldn't We shouldn't look yeah, too much I into know. it yeah. because of its pulpy nature. But, and, but the you know, Kiss was pulp and didn't have nearly the structural problems that this does. Exactly. Like, it had problems, you know, but not... Not, like, yeah. f- story falls completely apart under analysis problems. Yeah. Shot Corridor has, has problems on the surface. The Naked Kiss had had some issues that we really only got into after we talked about it for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, well, this one, yeah, has issues on the surface, but it also has, yeah, like I said, serious structural problems. Where, like, the story yeah. falls apart. Because you're like, that didn't make any sense. Neither did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like most of the characters' behaviors in in uh, Shock Quarter do not actually make sense. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, so. Certainly true. Certainly true. Um, yeah. Anything else to say yeah. about Shock? I don't know. I really. I like being uh, struck I, I by like... lightning. That was kind of cool. Yeah. It suddenly, no, took that, Shock that... Quarter to be like very, very literal. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, obviously, it's a it's a metaphor for the shock treatment he had already gone yeah, through. Yeah, 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 I know. Um, Which I remember yeah. well, reading I, somewhere. Yeah, sorry, not that we don't we don't need to get into a conversation about medicine, but I got, I remember reading somewhere that that's like this is one of those weird things that gets a totally bad rap. Shock therapy. That, what? Yeah, electroshock. Like shock therapy actually works. Yeah, well, it's used. Yeah, even today. But somehow, because it seems so much like torture, yeah. we still read it as torture, even in modern popular media. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I know nothing yeah. about how it works. Like I said, I only, the, I, I only read, like, a newspaper article about it or something. So Yeah. I mean, there, there's some issues with this, this movie. Um, the way Kathy talks, it suggests that, you know, psychosis is a, is, Contagious is communicable. Disease, yeah. Um, <laughs> But but at the same time, if we if we disregard what she's saying, there's still the very dangerous idea that undergoing uh, undergoing um, psychiatric treatment if treatment you don't need psychiatric it, makes you treatment crazy. makes you crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, and you know, if the doctors are professional, yeah, yeah. it's a serious weird. It's I mean, I want like maybe Tom I wanna, Cruise wrote this movie. I wouldn't want Dr. Fong to be my psychiatrist. Ooh, Dr. Fong's a scary man. Yeah. yeah. That's actually, that's really interesting because Dr. Fong is obviously supposed to be this very, this very learned psychologist and he knows, he knows what's going on and that's how he, he was able to completely <laughs> ignore any sort of ethics he ever had. Okay, but t- Dr. Taught. Fong also turns out to be completely wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But but I thought it's still interesting at the very end, instead of going to his personal friend who's a psychologist, Dr. Fong, uh, Kathy Kathy takes Johnny back to the doctor at the Somebody at figured the asylum. out that State University diploma was fake. <laughs> uh, but, wait, there's no state university. You know what? After after Johnny enters the asylum, we don't see Fong again. No, we only talk Maybe. about Fong. Maybe that actually did happen. It's a bit weird because, yeah, like, they don't go to his personal friend who tutored him for a year to become yeah. crazy. To try he did a... a bad job, apparently, because Johnny yeah. still turns out to be crazy. Um, yeah. But, like, also, like, <laughs> he really just sort of, like, Fong kind of just throws his hands up and says, ah, all right, just do it. Because, like, he's, like, oh, he was ready as he'll ever be. It's, like, obviously Johnny is not ready because he totally botches that practice interview. Yes, yes, the pra- they have a we practice and then he you immediately says ready as he'll ever yeah, be. Yeah, but that was really bad. Like, you see that, like, oh, he's as ready as he'll ever be. Like, even though he just did a really shitty job. 
But yeah, no, that not. was He just really broke in bad. five seconds. Yeah. If that's as ready as he'll ever be, you guys don't need to go questions. through with this. Yeah, you need to spend yeah. some more time. Like, I feel yeah. like they say like a year, but it seems like Fong maybe spent, I'm going to go with maybe 15 <laughs> minutes over the course of a year. <laughs> maybe, maybe. They've had a year, but every <laughs> yeah, they, every they, month they, they they've had five minutes. They've had a 45 second session <laughs> yeah, once right? a month. It's like, it's like, or maybe like, you know, they've had a year, but there's been a lot of procrastination, a lot of scheduling conflicts. Yes. This is actually the first time they met with Fong. He's like, eh, he's as ready as I'll ever be. Like, but really, exactly. honestly, what I think should have happened at the end of this movie, Fong should have totally had his medical license revoked. Yes. Because really, yes. it's all on Fong. Like, Fong knew this was happening and didn't do anything to stop it from happening. Right? Like, the other two could be... Exactly. Like, ign- like, could be said, like, well, they're ignorant of the laws and the situation, and ignorant of, this, of the repercussions of what they've, do- what they've done, right? Yeah. But Fong knows very well. He's like, oh, that's why I risked my, uh, my entire career. You know, he even, like, has that line at the beginning. He's like, but this is important, so I've risked my entire career on this. And it's like... Yeah. To solve one murder that shouldn't be unsolved. Yeah, well, it's and very she important. Fall on a psychiatrist, a newspaper um, editor, yeah. and a reporter to solve. They, they could even, yeah, like, oh man, we keep going. In, this, this is an endless circle, because like, yeah, Johnny could have just gone in and reviewed the patients for a little while, a couple times a week, and then told all he knows to the, uh, to the police. Yeah. Again, I don't think this will win you a Pulitzer. I think this will win you a. Why the hell did you do this crap? <laughs> yes, yes. And, and and even so, if someone tried to stop him from getting the information while just interviewing the characters, then we know who the murderer is, don't right. we? Right, yeah. Like, it's like, or at least who to suspect, let's dig deeper. Yeah. Yes. Let's find out if he's had any disciplinary actions taken against him. Oh, wait, he was transferred yeah. out of the female wing. Yeah, it's like... Which is full of nymphos. <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> no, there's a point in my notes uh, where where it just says... It's a quote from Johnny when he walks into that room. <laughs> nymphos! <laughs> yeah, right. With an exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's excited or scared at first. Oh, man. <laughs> that is... The nympho scene is just... The whole premise is like... The men have this entire range of mental disorders. The women have nymphomania. Yes. It's weird. It's like a... Like, yeah. I really feel like, yeah, maybe Naked Kiss ex- exists... Existed as, as, an as an apology to women? To all women everywhere from Sam Fuller. I am so sorry. I wrote this while I was drunk. I think, I just, I think I, that's I, a very good reason. I was totally dreaming about nymphos. Because, <laughs> like, it really feels that way. It's totally, like, if they had done just a little bit more, it would have been, like, a 70s exploitation film. You know what I mean? Like, that part. Like, yeah. like yeah. they're totally about to, like, we're, like, five seconds away from one of them ending up naked. Yes. and Just tearing their clothes right, off. Right. It's weird. And, Singing my Bonnie lies over the ocean. Yeah, that, that was a bit odd. Ah, uh, that was a weird, weird scene. Yeah, it was. It really felt like, like, it really does feel like Sam Fuller's like, what mental disorder do women suffer from? They don't have minds. <gasps> Nymphomania. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And then, uh, what is it? Zaf Brand, what is it? Uh, I forget his name from Futurama. Yeah, Zap, Zap Brown. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Or something like Nymphos. Oh, right. Yeah, it's like so... It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically yeah. the movie. Um, I, I don't think we have much more else to say, do you? No, no. So this movie, um, as far as Sam Fuller's work that we've now seen, uh, the the lesser of the two, yeah. though I think this was like his seventeenth or eighteenth movie. So guy guy was pretty prolific. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to see what the beginning ones were like. <laughs> yeah, or at least voluminous. Um, uh, but uh, made uh, still director of photography in this movie, uh, same as Naked Kiss. Really great. Um, those color those intercut color sequences, while themselves fairly poorly shot. Um, 
the effect yeah, was, they actually was amazing. Yeah, generate a pretty interesting so effect about their yeah. insanity. So there's some great moments in this movie, but overall, I, I didn't really like it. No, but I didn't dislike um, it. It was just sort of like... But yeah, I didn't dislike it. This isn't, this isn't a movie that I will swear off ever watching again, like at least one other, other movie we've watched. Yeah. Um, but... But it is. It yeah, is a if I'm going to recommend pulp, though, to some, something that's pulp noir, I'm going to recommend yeah. the naked. The kiss. naked kiss is going to get a lot more, a lot more recommendations out of me than than shock corridor. Yeah. But anyway, thank you yeah. once again for listening to Lost in Criteria. See you next time. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Adam, for this great conversation. <laughs>